20 years. I've been setting goals for 20 years. I love setting goals. Have I mastered it? Mm, sometimes it feels like I have. And then of course, life changes and I realize there's always more to learn. To me, goal setting feels like both a science and an art form. You have these tried and true practical steps that you can follow to set a goal, which to me is the science part. But if you don't really feel, and I mean feel into the goals that you're setting, that's the art form part, it's possible that you're setting yourself up for failure, which is okay because failure is just an opportunity to learn more about yourself and make course corrections. There are plenty of goals that I set and didn't accomplish and I learned from that process. So let's just dive right in to how I currently set goals. So this is a culmination of 20 years of setting goals. This is the process that I like to follow right now. It's January 6, 2024. I just finished setting my goals for the upcoming quarter. Here's the question I like to start with first. I like to ask myself, what would I be satisfied to say I accomplished by the end of next year? Once I have that in mind, I reverse engineer it. I like to break it down into quarterly goals and then from there break it down further into monthly, weekly, and or daily. At this point, once I have maybe my goal for the quarter that's in alignment with my goal for the year, I'm starting to feel into the habits I'm going to need to create. Who do I have to become? What type of person has what I want or is what I want to be or does what I want to do? How do they act? What do they believe? How do they feel? I'm kind of like Goldilocks from Goldilocks and the Three Bears. I'm trying to find the goal that feels just right. Not too hard or unrealistic, but also not too easy. So I think the simplest thing to do is to walk through an example of setting a goal for the year. And let's use the one of the most popular sought after New Year's resolutions, get in shape. So if I were to coach someone on setting this goal for themselves for the year, and I asked them, well, what would you be satisfied to have accomplished by the end of the year? And they said, get in shape. This is what I would ask them. First off, I would say, what does get in shape even mean to you? Do you want to build more muscle, lose body fat, be more active? You want to get specific and be realistic. So let's say you'd be stoked if by the end of the year you'd lost 20 pounds of body fat in a healthy manner. So now let's reverse engineer that. Lose 20 pounds of body fat in a healthy manner. That's our goal for the year. How could we break that down into quarterly goals? So for this upcoming quarter, which is three months, what's the first thing I can start to focus on to move myself in the direction of that goal? 20 pounds over 12 month time frame, that's a little over a pound and a half a month, which is completely realistic. I think the most I've ever seen recommended is like two pounds a week, and that's a lot. So it's actually more ideal to do it a little more slowly, most of the time for most people. It's better to do it slowly so that you can create a foundation of good habits so that you maintain the, the weight that you lost. A pound and a half a month, we know that's realistic, so great. Remember, we have an entire year, so we can slowly build up the habits required to achieve the goal. And like I said, I like to do quarterly, keeps me focused and creates momentum towards the bigger goal. So the next question is, where's the best place to start improving our diet, creating a consistent workout routine? At this point, I'm really feeling into what I'm most interested in. So let's say lately I've been thinking about more activity on a daily basis. So I would go with that, something that's top of mind, the thing that you feel most interest in. So for the first quarter of the year, I'm going to say my goal is to create a consistent workout routine. So let's be even more specific. For the next three months, I am going to do at least 10 minutes of intentional movement every day. I'm being specific with 10 minutes. And now if 10 minutes feels too, like too big of a commitment, I would do five. If 10 minutes feels too easy, I would do 20. And I'm also saying intentional movement so that I give myself the flexibility to do any kind of activity I want. So not just go to the gym, but anything, going for a walk, stretching, dancing, body weight exercises, like squats and push-ups. If you want to include going to the gym in that list, that's great. But again, we're trying to be realistic and flexible. So again, it's 
finding the goal that feels just right, not too hard, not too easy. Now that I have my goal for the quarter, here's the last part and a very important part. Think about who I need to become in order to create that habit. How do I need to think about that habit? How do I need to approach it? What's my new mindset? Here's an example. I am committed to nurturing my body and mind through consistent exercise. I am creating a habit of daily exercise and with each step I am transforming into a healthier and more energized version of myself. I am becoming a person who prioritizes health and wellness. My commitment to consistent workouts is a powerful investment in my well-being. I embrace the joy and vitality that exercise brings into my life and I am on a path of continuous improvement. So this is an affirmation that you could read to yourself every day. It's important that you come up with a statement or affirmation or mantra, whatever you want to call it, that's specific to you, that resonates with you. Something that when you read it, you feel a genuine shift of energy within you. You feel eager and excited about the journey you're going to take. So now you've got your specific realistic goal and your affirmation. Hopefully at this point you're feeling enthusiastic and eager and excited to jump in and get started. That's when you know you have picked the right goal when you feel that way. The last thing I will recommend is a review of some sort so that you can course correct because it's very likely that when you're in living your day-to-day life that you will realize some things about the the goal that you've chosen for yourself and you may need to do little course corrections along the way. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for listening. I hope you have a lovely morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and I will see you in the next video.